Hi. This presentation shows how to use the virtual production editing tools uh, in a short VPAD together with Katana and um, how to distribute the scene, receiving updates and render a scene using the real-time render developed during the DreamSpace project. Also, I will briefly walk you through the San Miguel scene and explain the setup so that we can make changes, make changes, add objects, start distributing and rendering. For this demo, you need at least one client connected to the network with the virtual production editing tools um, installed. This could be either an application built on a tablet or another desktop machine having Unity 3D um, installed. On the Katana side, um, we need Katana Live Previous, which includes a real-time renderer and a plugin to receive updates from the network, which is called Katana Listener. Furthermore, the scene distribution plugin for Katana is needed to transfer the geometry from Katana to the VPAD client. Um, as a virtual set, we will use the San Miguel scene, which has been prepared in DreamSpace using the original San Miguel scene, kindly provided by uh, Guillermo Leal, and which has served as a benchmark and test scene during the project. All these tools and assets can be accessed through the uh, DreamSpace website, um, dreamspaceproject.eu/downloads. And after you follow the instructions uh, from the website. Um, and after you install the tools, you will have everything ready to start using VPAD with Katana. For the demo, I stored everything uh, in one directory, so um, you should have somewhere in the system uh, the real-time render called uh, Gonzo, uh, the Katana listener, um, the uh, scene distribution plugin, which uh, I pretty much um, clone the git repository and you will find the scene distribution plugin inside the vmpad main folder and of course the uh, San Miguel uh, demo scene. Before we run Katana we need to tell where to find the uh, actual plugins. Katana will look in the path for a folder called libs so we need to point Katana to uh, the Gonzo renderer folder to the Katana Listener Resources folder and to the VPET Scene Distribution Build Resources folder. We can do this by going into the shell and set an environment variable there, or I prefer to create a startup script which set the environment variables inside the script so that we can just run the script and we are done. Um, for that, we go to the San Miguel uh, scene folder, and in that folder we create a startup script called Katana San Miguel, and define the environment variables Katana resources um, for the Gonzo renderer, for the Katana listener, and for the scene distribution plugin. So we can also set the uh, permissions to uh, that we can execute the script and then simply run the script and Katana will walk through all the paths to find in the Katana resources environment variable. The first thing we uh, can check or we can see what's uh, what changed is that we got another uh, tab down here and that's the Katana Listener tab. We can open that one and keep it for later. So, okay. Don't go to file, open, choose San Miguel Arnold Live View, say accept. So now we have the scene open. First thing to mention is that we uh, defined project variables to choose between different complexity to say uh, which light set we want to use and also which renderer we want to choose to render the scene. In the very top there's a section where we load the scene graph XML and do the look diff assignment. There is also 
a switch to choose between different level of detail representations. On the left side we have a section where we create uh, three different light sets. Uh, also with the variable switch to say which light set we want to use. We have um, light mappings for Arnold and Gonzo and we also have a node here to create the uh, camera merge the light and the cameras together and here merge the geometry and the camera and lights together. The next section contains prunes and isolators. As the San Miguel scene is very complex we need to remove a few of the geometry. There's also uh, again a complexity switch where we can choose between production and the debug version. The debug version contains even more prunes and so it will remove trees and flowers. We have a node with global settings for Arnold. Uh, there's a node, um, a render settings node, where we can choose the renderer. There's already the Gonzo real-time renderer set, so it's fine. Uh, we have a node to map material parameters and here is a node where we can define level of detail settings. Um, an important concept is that the Gonzo renderer and also the scene distribution can choose which geometry should be rendered. This happens um, by by um, by tech. So we tell the Gonzo renderer that it should choose the geometry by tech. We define the method in that node. So we say that the mode is by tech. And also we tell the Gonzo renderer that it should choose geometry tagged by the label high. Another concept is that we can define objects which are which can be added with the virtual production editing tools. For that we need to flag those objects with the attribute. We do the seer and the editable set node and we flag the object with the attribute called dreamspace.edible. So all those objects can then be selected with the virtual production editing tools and we can make changes to them. Um, there's another node which defines a global um, attribute to uh, tell the, uh, the Katana listener that it should evaluate all the transform between the leaf and uh, the root. And in the last section we have uh, a few settings for the for the virtual production editing tools. So there are another two prune nodes to make the scene even more lightweight. And we have also an a statement to set um, the method to ch which which uh, mode to use um, to choose the the level of detail. So the same with the Gonzo realtor renderer happens here with the scene distribution. Um, we tell the scene distribution that the mode is by tag and that the scene distribution should choose geometry tagged with the label LO. Then there's another render settings node uh, where we pretty much only switch the renderer to scene distributor. Before we uh, distribute and render a scene, let's have a look at the scene first. Um, choose this node as a view node by double clicking it and go to the attributes tab. When selecting the root, uh, you see that we have the uh, global statement for the level of detail here, the method and the actual tag to use with the scene distribution plugin. The same with the for the Gonzo renderer. We have the level of detail here, the mode by tag, and the tag to choose is high. Um, when you expand it here, you have a section with all the lights camera section, uh, geo section. 
Um, even so, we pruned a lot of geometry. The scene is still very complex. So I would now just go for uh, the tables, tables past your plates. And when you select the table group number six, there, well, those tables here are our editable objects. So table group number six contains uh, the dream space dot edible flag. So now we can choose this group here to select and edit on uh, virtual production editing tools. Uh, when you expand it further, just the first one, table cloth, you see here you have the level of detail group. Below that level of detail group you have the two different level of details. And those two level of details, two different level of details are tagged with the uh, with the actual level of detail tag. So one for low and one tag for high. Um, within the scene there um, there's a bookmark uh, which expands part of the of the San Miguel scene. So not everything because it's as I mentioned quite complex but um, just a few assets to get you uh, an idea how the San Miguel scene is set up. So we have the global light and choose the, the camera. So this is our view we, um, we will have in the renderer. Now we can transfer and render the scene. <coughs> As the uh, Gonzo Realtime Renderer and the Scene Distribution plugin are both uh, renderers, we need to run those one after the other. That means we need to transfer the scene first to the virtual production editing tools, then render the scene with the Realtime Renderer and start the Katana listener to um, yeah listen for updates. Make sure that the uh, Scene Distributor Render Settings node is the Viewing node by double clicking it and just say right click and click live render. When you go to the render lock you see that the scene distribution plugin uh, walks through the the whole scene graph on every location it looks for the um, level of detail tag and choose objects tagged with the low uh, label. Um, it collects textures, meshes, material parameters and stores them uh, in a cache and keep that for streaming to the client. So now on the on my tablet I run the, the VPIT and say with the correct IP address I say just load the scene and you see here that we got a request for textures, objects and nodes. And in a second now I have the scene on my tablet so we transferred the scene to the to the tablet device. So after we transferred the scene to the virtual production editing tools, we can render the scene and listen for updates. For that, uh, set as a viewing node the node right above the remote tablet section, just by double clicking it, and go to tabs, get down listener, and open the live update tab. Move it over there, and then simply hit view node. This will render the scene with the render set in the render settings and we already set the uh, Gonzo real-time render as our renderer. So Gonzo is also walking through the uh, scene graph to every location, check for the level of detail tag and choose geometry tagged by the label high. And we can go to the monitor and see image here. So let's move the tab over there. So this camera and simply hit start to begin to listen for updates from the virtual production editing tools. Um, back on the tablet 
I could, for example, just select the, the, the table in front and move a little bit to the top, to the right. And so we see the changes coming through uh, the network to Katana. Also, um, when you, for example, in Katana, move the camera, you've got um, an updated image uh, immediately. So next, let's add a few things to our scene. Uh, first, we will add uh, a light, and then another camera, and also we will um, set another object as editable uh, inside the virtual production editing tools. So go back in the node graph tab, and in the very top you have the camera and light section. As we are looking right now, working with the daylight setting we will simply take the daylight gaffer 3 node and add a new light here right click on the on the area and choose light um, add the shader and choose the gonzo light shader uh, we want to create a point light so first we need to to choose as a gonzo light shader an area light and then we can set the type. We leave this as sphere because we want to have a, a point light. Maybe change the color a little bit to, let's say, a little bit red. Increase the intensity and go here in the perspective view. Choose the translation tool and and set the light maybe move the light in front of the uh, of the big door so back here yeah okay next thing is we will add another camera for that we in the node graph hit tab and then start typing camera choose camera create go to the parameters and call it top connect this to the merge node and you see here we have the camera top so we can have a look through the camera top which is at the default position and we will move the camera to to an yeah to a total view of our of our scene so um the last thing we want to uh, change is uh, we want to make an another object edible so switch to perspective and for example let's choose the uh, the two planters uh, when you go in the scene graph a little bit below you have the two planters here um, I will expand the branches. Now we have the planters visible and so still both selected planter 1 and planter 2. Go to the uh, editable node which is called editable set and here at the, uh, at the scene graph selection we will append uh, the planter 1 and planter 2. So now we have the both planters uh, added to the node. And when you you can check this and go to the attributes view or attributes tab and when you select planter you see that in dream space they are flagged as editable. So now we are ready to transfer the scene again to the tablet and see if we can change the planters.